friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me. I'm just kidding. I'm just trying. I'm just practicing my audition for the Civilization Seven narrator, who you know ideally hasn't been picked yet, so I can do it. It's a beautiful day on planet Earth. Look, we're all Civ Six people. But we are now living in a world where Civilization Seven has been announced for Axis and 2K getting together, making another Civilization game for a while there in the trenches after the Frontier Pass. It kind of felt like you were never going to get a new Civilization game, but it has been announced. We are here. We are living in that world now, and I am excited. A short wait left for some gameplay footage, a slightly longer wait for the actual game, but let's hop into all the teaser stuff and see what we can find out about Civilization Seven. Now, it's not on the website right away, but I heard from an inside source at 2K or for access or somewhere that if you like and subscribe to this youtube channel it really shows them how much you want to love civ 7 so I, I don't know why that's a weird marketing thing that they're doing but it certainly is anyways on this civilization 7 website we got a website now that's pretty cool there's a lot you can glean from the website i've already kind of been through everything i think this is a perfect kind of marketing release from for access from 2k it's clear they have a really kind of not ambitious, but a really, you know, scaled back, you know, deep in the trenches strategy for Civilization 7. And I want to talk about it. So you start big logo Civ 7. It's unmistakable. It's kind of blurred out on the sides. They want your focus to be that this is Civilization 7. They even in the little video, they even make this 7 of the Z, like the front and center thing. It is the one thing they want you to know about this game is that is the seventh version of Civilization. And part of that's important. In between 5 and 6, they made a game called Civilization Civilization Beyond Earth, and it was fine. I liked it more than most people did, but most people really hated it. And so the Civilization franchise took a little bit of a downturn with Beyond Earth, and it took a lot of hype to get back into six. And so we're here with seven, and they are not making that mistake again. They're going straight from six to seven. And it's funny because at the bottom, it takes you through the history of civilization. So we start with Civilization One here. This is the first one I watched my dad play when I was a kid. And it shows you like what all the new things were in each civilization game you know the introduction of culture and diplomacy victories in civilization three or whatever it is what's missing though is civilization beyond earth they really want you to know that this is a civilization game in the civilization world you are normally like used to playing in there's going to be leaders it's going to be on planet earth it's going to take you throughout history you're going to be building cities and empires they want you to get this sense with this release with this web page with what they say about it down here that this is a a, a new kind of awesome addition to a game you already love and not something transformationally different which i think is a really good approach what we don't want is like a transformationally different civ game we want a new civ game that is better than the last civ game but i, I it's, it's comforting to know that their whole marketing strategy revolves around take what the people love about civilization and just you know, slam the marketing with that and make sure everyone knows that we know what they want and we're going to do it we have clicked the learn more button and we're going to get to the consoles in a second we have a release trailer we're going to take a look at but this is what it says here and i want to point out just how much this sounds like it could be the tagline for civ 6 and that's not a bad thing i've already gone over this that's not a bad thing at all the award-winning strategy game franchise returns with a revolutionary new chapter that is the only sentence in this release that makes anything sound new that is the only sentence that like you know makes note that this is a brand new addition to a civilization franchise everything else really could be the marketing material for any other civ game sid meyer civilization 7 and empowers you to build the greatest empire the world has ever known just like all the other civ games rule as many rule as one of many legendary leaders from throughout history so we're already learning that they haven't changed that fundamental system in civilization you know you have a leader you hop into a game you're playing civ that one core thing like the core gameplay loop has not changed and that's important to establish in the marketing Establish your civilization, construct cities and architectural wonders to expand your territory, conquer or cooperate with rival civilizations in pursuit of prosperity and explore the far reaches of the unknown world. So all of this, establish a civilization, construct cities and wonders, expand your territory, conquer or cooperate 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 with rival civilizations this is all stuff you do in all civ games which is awesome it's glad it's here like this is a very safe marketing strategy this is take what we know people like about civ and make sure they know that is what they're getting with this brand new game i am so stoked 
Will you build an empire that stands the test of time? That's the same freaking tagline as the other Civ games as well. Uh, Civilization 7 is a 4X strategy game, so we're not abandoning the 4X. I don't know why we would, but we're not doing that. And it's developed by Firaxis. And you know what? While we're here, you know, beggars are choosers. And I would also like a new XCON game as well as a new Civ game. But yeah, we've chucked it on the witch list. We've, we've got all of our Civ 7 information. And this is what we know about the game so far is it's basically it, what, it's, what it's saying is Civ 6 but a revolutionary, revolutionary new chapter. You know, the Civ you know and love, but new chapter in the same book kind of thing, which I, for one, am happy about. We have a gameplay showcase this August. So up in August, we're going to get to see some of the gameplay, which is awesome. But here we have where it's releasing. So we have Steam. A bit weird that no Epic Games on here. I don't know if it's a Firaxis thing or a 2K thing. I have Borderlands on Epic Games, and that was a 2K game as well. So I'm not really sure, but Steam for now... PlayStation, Xbox, not surprising. The console Civ folks have blown up since the last release, so they're there. And I'm just so happy to see the Switch people. The Switch people, I feel like, are always missing out. There's always porting issues. There's always something going on. And so I'm happy that hopefully this release day is the same for everybody. It just says, you know, 2025. But we're getting Nintendo Switch, like, official from the beginning, which I'm happy about because a lot of people play Civ on the Switch, and it's nice to see that all the consoles will be represented. I have already seen this teaser trailer video, but if you haven't watched it, I want to play it through. It's only a minute and a half. I want to play it through and highlight some of the things that I noticed when I was watching it. This isn't a deep dive frame by frame thing. I'm sure Bo's this will do something like that where he goes frame by frame. <laughs> that sounds like his kind of gig. Um, but I do want to talk about, you know, what I did notice in this and what it makes me, you know, excited for and what it makes me think they're going to go for on the release of this game. Because I think this is very consistent with their clear marketing strategy of Civ, but newer. Like Civ, the Civ you want, but it's a more amazing. I hope the audio is okay. I guess we'll find out. We can turn it down a little bit. Study the past if you would define the future. So we're starting out early. This whole trailer goes in chronological order. This is starting in an ancient era of some kind. At the end, we are going to have big rocket ships and shit blasting off. And so, you know, they're clearly telling you with this trailer, or the same gameplay loop you're familiar with. We're going to start at the beginning of time. We're going to leave at the end of time when you win. And, you know, what you're doing is happening in between. We got people carving things. We have builders building things. You know, I, I this is again a lot of imagery that is similar to Civ games in the past. You are going to be constructing your own empire. Like the second you get, you're going to pick your leader. But the second you get into the game, the world is yours to create. And that's you know something that we love about Civ and something that I'm glad they're kind of really hinting at with the imagery here. Let us all but death. We have some, I want to say this is more like Greek architecture. You know, we have Cleopatra again. We got pyramids. And what I'm what I'm getting from this is I'm not surprised that Cleopatra and the pyramids are in. You know, pyramids, iconic world wonder. They're going to be in a game called Civilization, even if it's the eighth or seventh time. Uh, I, I don't know how I got those numbers wrong. You know, Cleopatra has been in Civ a lot. I'm not sure if there's any other Egyptian leaders that they could pick. But choosing to include... Cleopatra and the pyramids here is smart for two reasons. One, it's recognizable. If you have never played Civ before, you've never played a Civ game, you're just hopping in on Civ 7, you see the teaser trailer. These are things, the like imagery, these are things that you are familiar with. You get the idea of what civilization is all about. But also for our returners, remember, this is, I think, their whole marketing strategy. Remember that Civ 6 game you really liked? Remember that one that had Cleo and the pyramids? Well, the new one also has Cleo and the pyramids, but better, right? Like, I think that this is a really smart strategy from them. Great, journey. Great Wall of China here, and there's lots of battling and fighting. So we're going, you know, chronologically through time. We got swords, we got shields, people on horseback, lots of fighting. We got horse archers. We got some horse archers here. We got some, these look like Hwacha type cannons to me. And so, again, if you've never played Civ, and this is your first teaser trailer ever, you're getting the gist of it. You know, this is also part of their marketing where it says, you know, if you're new to Civ, why not try Civ 6? It's 95% off, right? And so, this is part of it. If you've never played Civ and you're just hopping in, this is the kind of thing that's in Civilization 6. I, you know, I paused this a few times when I was going through. I don't think you can tell anything about the gameplay from any of this, but it is showing off some of the Civs that you can 
expect. You know, in the base game of Civ, you're somewhere between 15 and 20 leaders usually, give or take. And I'm not sure how they'll approach the leader system in 7, but, you know, we can expect 15 to 20 leaders, and you have to find leaders that are well represented. You know, this is a very Eurocentric game, so you get a lot of Eurocentric and European leaders, but we're going to have some Asian representation early on. We're going to have some, I want to say, like, horse archers give me Mongolian vibes or Scythian vibes. You're going to have that kind of representation early on in the base game of Civ. So what this trailer is also doing is saying, hey, you know, there's a lot of cultures throughout all of history from a lot of places on Earth, and we're going to try and represent them in Civ 7. That's at least what I'm getting from this. And a lot of people will say, well, isn't that the case in Civ 6? Not necessarily. A lot of the people in like more than two thirds, maybe two thirds or so of the Civs in Civ 6 now were added in DLC. It's not the base game, right? The base game was quite Eurocentric and American centric. And so this is great to see early on. But let me first do some great thing that shall be told among men hereafter. There we go, some French imagery. I'm not sure if this means like France will be in the game, but I, I just assume that masquerades are kind of a French thing. That's just, I don't know if that's just me being Canadian, but we just assume that. Um, you have violin, you have a violinist here, you have a musician that they're talking about great things. I think what we're meant to be gleaning from this is that some kind of great person system is still in the game. You are going to be able to interact with all of the, you know, great people that happened throughout history. I'm sure the dynamics of it will be different than Civ 6 because it's a different game. But again, if you have never played Civ before, this gives you a really good download of what you can expect. If you have played Civ before, it's saying, hey, don't worry, you're in safe hands. Remember that game you just played that you really liked that had these great people well we still got them each of us shall endure this world's life until the end nice to see here just some just some boat imagery like hey this game is played on the land it's played on the sea here's a dude painting the whole thing it's just giving us a lot of the not information about the gameplay but lots of information about the game right I, I don't know exactly what this is but it seems like more of a canal than it is like an actual ocean front so it leads me to believe that districts are still kind of maybe a thing and uh, maybe not in the exact same way but there's multiple ships kind of going in and out of harbors and whatnot here so good to see now we're really on the open sea there's people sailing there's people looking through we got train tracks and the industrial revolution and then we get this really cool like five people hammering yeah, there it is. And so lots of lots of imagery about building your empire, about using workers to build an empire. Again, you get the point. If you understand Civ, you get it. Um, if you've never been here, you get it. But it feels like you're it just feels like a trailer made by people who really know what I want in my next Civ game. And there we have a more modern architecture. We have rocket ships taking off. Uh, very similar to the victory conditions in Civ 6 and Civ 5. You're going to space. There's a the little 7 on the Z. Um, but yeah, so that teaser trailer is a trailer that just really feels like it is intended to give a good download of what Civ is to someone who doesn't know, but also to make the, the Civ 6 heads out there just feel really comfortable. Like this is not going to be a game that fundamentally changes civilization forever. This is going to be the best iteration of the game that you already love which is exactly what i want and in my civ 7 you know it's just it's, it's a spectacular teaser it really is i feel really good and finally i just wanted to highlight here if you are watching this and you haven't played civ 6 yet you're just hanging out you're trying to see what the civ 6 fans think about civ 7 just so you can see if you want to hop in on the hype train um experience civ 6 while you wait 95 percent off on steam if you are thinking about getting civilization 6 hop over to steam the anthology here i believe is 20 dollars uh, yeah, Civilization Anthology is 30 Canadian dollars. That is literally everything. That is every single thing in Civ 6. And Civ 6 is a, is a really, really great game with the anthology. And so I just think you, you are not going to spend $30 better than you will on the Civ 6 anthology. I promise you that. And so if you are on the fence, you don't know if you want to try Civ 6 before Civ 7 comes out, I, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to, to take the, them up on this offer of 30 Canadian dollars. It's probably 25 American dollars if I do a conversion correctly. 
And that will be it for this Civ 7 reaction. Not a ton of information. We'll be back in August to look at the gameplay, obviously. And then we'll keep track of all the updates as they come. I'm really excited for this game. We're going to do a bunch of Civ 7 related videos. Now that it's officially announced, I want to do a wish list. You know, my top things that I want to see in Civ 7. I want to do a community list of like your top things that you want to see in Civ 7. I want to do some speculation just about what I think they will focus on based on, you know, once, once the leaks start coming out about the game, you kind of lose it. But like, well, it's just fresh and there's a Civ 7 and we know nothing about it. What I think Firaxis would be smart to focus on after, you know, the 10 years of Civ 6 or the eight years of Civ 6. And so I want to do all those videos and I'm really excited about this game. I'm excited to go on the Civ 7 journey with you just like we did for Civilization 6. Fingers crossed there's not a pandemic that forces us to play it for thousands of hours. It'd be nice if we could do it just because we want to. Uh, but if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the comments. I'll see you on the Discord for all of the Civ 7 discussion. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.